Welcome back. WCC Media Day right here at Time Warner Cable Sportsnet in El Segundo, California. Chris McGee, Coach Dave Miller. And joining us, we saved the best for last, oh, Coach. Wow. He's the last one. Rex Walters from USF San Francisco. Chris Adams is supposed to join us. Flight yeah. issues? Flight issues. Uh, the whole USF contingent, but myself, obviously. I, I flew out last night. They flew it this morning. <laughs> stuck in the fog. They got stuck in the fog. So. Stuck in the fog. Coach, they don't plan very well because if I had a chance to come to LA, I would want to come two days ahead. I, I, I came a day ahead, got a chance to do a little bit of recruiting, uh, enjoy a little bit of the weather. And, and now We've I'm had here. bad weather for you, though. It's been uh, cloudy. Hey, it, 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 it's all good. I'm here. <laughs> Coach, six years in, and it's got to be an exciting time for you coming off of 14 wins last year. I believe we're 14 and 15, 7 and 9 in the conference, but you have all well, these 15 guys. 15 and 16. 15. I'll take in every win I can Oh, we got to get that. You know about that. 15 yeah. and 16. Take every win. Because that go, get. absolutely yes, you yeah. do. <laughs> and, and we're going to count <laughs> in a couple of <laughs> exhibition scrimmages. Someone's getting right. fired. Someone's and getting and fired. Well, actually, it was me. I did my own research. I'm getting fired. Eight of nine guys return your top eight of nine. That's got to be an exciting time for you. Yeah, no, we got a good team. It's a good group, you know, and, and Matt Glover, you add him to the mix. He was mm -hmm. a kid from Penn State. Gives us yep. another dimension. Can really guard the ball. Coaches, we like those guys that can really guard the ball, and uh, he can do that and also gets us the extra possessions. So um, it's a good group. It's been a fun group. We're playing We're playing a style that I would like to play. We finally have got back to playing the style defensively and offensively that I want to play because we got depth. Coach, I was going to save this question for last, but you just yeah. brought up guarding the ball. With yeah. the new hand check rule that's yeah. coming into play, and you're, you as a player in yeah. college, in the NBA, you were physical. You had active hands. You got up and you got into yeah. defenders. Has that changed your coaching right now, or is it too soon to have to adjust to that? Yeah, I, I think that we're, you know, it's, it's easier to slow them down than it is to speed them up. So we're, we're, we're going to be aggressive. We're going to attack. That's the way that we play. We're, we're an aggressive style of team. Um, um, we're going to get into people, and we're going to do it without our hands. That's the bottom line. you got to do it without your hands. you got to get your body in front. you got to keep them in front and push them to a side. And That's the way we're going to play. And, and Matt Glover allows us to do more of that. Corey Hilliard allows us to do more of that. And Avery Holmes allows us to do more of that. So what would you say in bullet points is the strength of your defensive system that you've instilled? Um, that we're going to be attacking you. You're not. You're, you're going to have a tough time knowing the difference between man-to-man -man defense, uh, trapping, uh, when we're trapping, who we're trapping, why we're trapping, how we guard the post. Uh, the biggest thing is nothing's going to be easy. You know, we want to keep the ball obviously out of the middle of the floor, but uh, that's going to be the strength, and we're going to be we're going to be locked in. We're going to be together with it. It's got to be great talk. It's got to be early, loud, and constant. Yeah, I was just going to say, how how hard is it to get guys yeah. to talk? It, it's a big deal. You know, yesterday in practice, we had a, a player drive baseline. We had three guys all there to help. And I'm like, well, no, we don't need three guys to yeah. stop the ball. We need one. So we got to talk about, you know, who's on the ball, who's going to help, who's helping the help. But we got to have that type of communication in uh, dribble penetration, ball screen action, uh, in the post, there's got to be constant communication. Chris, a big fan of his. I mean, when you say talk early, loud, and continuous, <laughs> yeah, this guy's been One well best, versed. <laughs> a absolutely. And, and you know, we're, we do the nightly shows uh, about the Los Angeles Lakers, and a lot with Mike D'Antoni's system is, is shooting a three, and they're always looking for how to do it successfully. You guys are able to do that. I believe you're ranked fifth nationally yeah. in three-point percentage. What's the key to great three-ball shooting, besides having guys that can just flat-out shoot? Well, that's the first yeah, part. Yeah, 100%. You, know, but you listen to Coach Wooden talk, and he said, I never talked about rebounding. I just got good rebounders. Yeah. You know, we've recruited good shooters. Mm -hmm. You know, we got guys that can really shoot the best. We do spend a lot of time on it. We do uh, put a premium on quality of shot and getting, ball, uh, getting paint touches, getting ball reversals, uh, understanding shot selection, understanding what the best shot is for us. Uh, and when you take it, we take it aggressively. You know, I'd rather, and this is my philosophy, I'd rather have a player shoot a bad shot aggressively than a good shot passively. So when our guys shoot, they shoot it aggressively. Now, we do, you are what you emphasize, and we emphasize quality shots, but when we shoot it, we're going to shoot it aggressively, and we don't hold back. I had that same philosophy, but he had better shooters. That's why he's got a good <laughs> head of hair, because it did not work for me. You return eight of your top nine right. players. What does this team need to do, Rex, to make that jump, let's say, to the top three in this very yeah. good conference? Well, we've got to get better at rebounding the basketball. That was a, a big Achilles heel for us. Um, we have to get some type of post presence inside to get the ball inside to allow an inside out. Last year, we were very much dribble penetration to kicks. And, and this year, we have more post presence with a guy like Cruz Pinkins, obviously Cole Dickerson coming back, and Mark Tolufson. We'd like to see one other guy step up. Uh, to be a post presence for us. So now we do have more of an inside outside action. When you have these guys returning, and, and, and you mentioned Cole Dickerson already, and you have the Cody Doolins of the world and Chris Adams, who's not here, but what, 
what is the personality of this team? And, and do those guys take a lot of the responsibility and accountability on, on their own? Do you have coaches out there? We, it's, it's better. It's uh -huh. much better. You know, last year, as, as having a team with no seniors, you didn't have that finality year. You yeah. Know I mean, where this is it. This is my last raw. This is the legacy I'm living, leaving. Now we do with, with a guy like Cody, with a guy like Cole. They know this is their last chance. We've talked a lot about, you know, being a team that can play for a conference championship, playing an NCAA tournament game, playing the NCAA tournament, period. Well, this is their last chance. So uh, there is definitely more. Um, self-coaching by the team, echo coaching by our team. It's not just my voice. It's not just my assistants. you got to have all 16 guys bought in. Coach, you mentioned Cody Doolin, your senior point guard. He started all but three games since he's been a player. What makes him so good? Uh, Big-time basketball IQ. You know, you just can't – he'd walk in this room and you may not think, well, he's much of a player, but then you watch him play. Uh, and he knows – he can literally take snapshots and he knows where all nine guys are on the floor. Uh, where they're going, what they're doing, what the rotations are. He's really good at making his teammates better. You know, Coach, you've had time now that you've been at, been at USF to get the program, you know, going the right way and, and with the guys you want. You know, now that you've been there six years and now you have some guys graduating, what's this group mean to you now that you've had them? I mean, you recruited them. Yeah. They've been here. You saw them as freshmen. you got seniors. What, yeah. What's this guy, it, group it's, of guys? It's, it's really the first group that we've recruited uh, and really recruited, like, we recruited when they were Cody. young, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cody as a sophomore, yeah. we were recruiting him. Cole as a junior, we were recruiting him. Um, it, it's going to be hard. Yeah, it's going to be hard. You know, I, I, we've had some special players, Angelo Clario, special player, Rashad Green, special player. These two guys are special to me. You know, they, they've been through the wars, they've been through some good times, they've been through some tough times, and they've kept getting, uh, kept fighting, kept getting better. So it, it will be tough, but uh, you like having those type of guys on your team. In this conference, it seems like there needs to be a big three, and I know you feel confident with Doolin. You yeah. have to feel confident, confident with Dickerson. Yeah. Who's that third guy that steps up for you, Rex? It'll be interesting. You know, Mark Tolleson, if you, if you had a three-point contest, a dunk contest, and a 40-yard dash, he might win all three. Hmm. He could be a guy. Uh, Matt Glover from Penn State is a great 50-50 uh, ball guy. A uh, great on-ball defender, can score it a lot of different ways. So we always say the best player on the court is the open man. So we want to find that guy. Saying uh, we will have different guys step up. And if they try to take one guy away, we'll, we'll have another guy step up. But, you know, those would be two guys off the top of my head. Avery Holmes can give us instant offense, 43-point shooter, much better athlete this year. Tim Dirksen, I think Tim and Matt were our best in our inner squad scrimmage the other day. So it's tough for me to say that yeah. third guy. We want to beat you with five. You know, we want to beat you with five, and, and that's how we do it. I love watching Cole, and I think he's got a motor, and he's a two-way player. He yes. competes for you on both sides of the ball. Is it crazy for me to think that he could average a double-double for you this season? No, not at all. Uh, he, he's a double-double type of guy. Those should be the type of numbers. We want it to be more efficient. You know, we had a, we had a lottery pick in our in our conference last year in Kayla Olnick. He did it in about 27, 28 minutes because he did it from the first, very first tip to when he went out of the game. A lot of times they were up 15, 20 before when, he, when he checked out. We want Cole to have that type of impact to, to do it from the get-go and be really efficient. Uh, not just be a number guy, but be an efficient numbers guy for us. You know, Coach, anyone who's ever coached knows that, I mean, when, when you're close with a team, the losses really hurt because you, you feel for these kids and, and the wins are fantastic because you know how hard they've worked. What do you want for this team? I know you want to win every game, but, like, right. what, what point do you want them to get to where, 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 where you know, you can send them out on the, on the right way for those it, group of guys you've been with for a long time? I just want them, you know, number one, our goals are really simple at USF. Mm -hmm. We want them to have a current something they love to do when they're done mm -hmm. playing. So we want them, when they leave USF, to have that degree uh, have things in place so that the way, when they are done playing, and hopefully they play afterwards, we'll talk about that later, um, um, they'll, they'll be in the real world now, and, and they'll have a career in something they love to do. The second thing is player development. We, we think that we have two right now that have a chance to play professional basketball. We want that for our guys. We want to make, make sure we push them every single day. And the third thing is we do want to have that championship feeling. We Damn. want that feeling in the locker room, not just after a big game, but at the end of the season when we look at each other, we know we've absolutely – You know that feeling when you went to a Final Four. No I mean, question. It's, it's, we've given everything to each other, yeah. and we'll always have those memories yeah. the rest of our lives. Rex, as you were able to dissect your team in the offseason, as yeah. coaches always do, what's something offensively and what's one thing defensively that you really 
want to emphasize with this team right. to, to, to impact the success this season? Yeah, well, the biggest thing is defensively is we've got to keep the ball out of the paint. Layups, layups get you beat. So we've got to do a great job of protecting paint. With the new rules, it makes it difficult. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is we've got to be great at keeping the ball out of the middle and keeping the ball out of the paint and limiting the one contested shot per possession. If you can get that one contested shot per possession, you're going to win a lot of games. And then offensively, we want our defense to create offense. You know, once again, layups win you a lot of games. If our defense can create offense for us, that just makes everything so much easier. Do you see that it helps you, Rex, when you play nine years of professional basketball, seven in the NBA in terms of, like, re reaching these kids and saying, hey, if you want to get to the next level, you, you, know, you know what it takes. Yeah, um, I, I, I do a little bit. You know, I think the, the biggest thing for us is, yes, you want to be a pro. You want to be the best player you yeah. can be. And, and that's what we talk about every single day. You know, it's about doing your job and helping your teammates. That's the great thing about basketball, helping your teammates do theirs as well. So we want our guys to understand that if you do that and you get them, if you max out every single day, give the best effort. And when we take off days, we take off days. Right? But when you're, when you're on the court, you've got to give us everything you've got to give yourself a chance to do those things. Do you ever have to light these guys up? I mean, when Coach was, was with Byron Scott in New Orleans, he had to sometimes light guys up, didn't he? He had, he had, uh, to, show, he had to show them he could still shoot. Thank goodness Chris isn't here because Chris will tell you, I'll light some guys <laughs> up every once in a while. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's, it's interesting. We've had so many coaches in here today, and when you talk to a coach that had success in college, yeah. a coach that had success in the NBA, it's not so much about the W's. It's playing hard. It's playing smart, playing together. And what I get out of listening to you talk that winning is a byproduct of playing the, the right way. It's about the process. You know, I tell our guys, we can win a game by one and I'll be fired up, uh, upset. I could be really, really happy because it's about what we did yeah, in that yeah, time absolutely. frame. That's what it comes about. It, it's, it's all about. So let's get into that. Let's make it a process. Let's make it a byproduct of what we did in the time that we were given. Love chatting with yeah, you. Thanks yeah, thank so much you. for making the trip. I appreciate it. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. for having me, guys. All right. All right. Good work.